This is definitely the next big thing after Kim Porsche the series. The new area kicked off in August with a ban. I'm just going to ask if this is broadcastable. The messy BL climate in the entertainment industry, the hookups of BL drama actors, and the real look of screen CPS off-camera seem to be reminding fans not to like the real-life version of celebrity CPS or of why is so amazing in both subject matter and scale that I'm just asking if it's allowed to be on the air. Without further ado, let's get right into the whole piece. The first story is centered around the popular BL drama CP Nuon and Pen, which is already a masterpiece at the annual BL Drama Awards Gala. Both were nominated but lost out to the more popular and intellectually stimulating traffic star, A.T.I. Nuon listened to his opponent's rambling acceptance speech with a meaningful expression, and with a smile on his face, Pen doesn't forget to remind his CP to stand up and applaud. Well, the title of the boy with the fake smile is yours. Nuon and Pen look on as the A.T.I. pair are actively in business at a fan review event, with fans chanting excitedly alongside them. The two don't mind a close interaction in order to fight for the rights. Back at home, Pen finally takes off his mask, and while counting the agents who can't read colors, he mocks the other young actors, who are really starting to get cocky when they become famous. Pen gloats in the praise of his fans every day, but he's not at all satisfied with the press. He wants to be the most popular man in the BL scene, so he decided to work on his work. High energy clips from the front are coming. Yes, you read that right. He asked Nuon to go to a hotel to rehearse in order to get more involved in the performance. It turns out Pen is experiential acting. The day has come to accept the results of the rehearsal, and the two of them are kissing hard. The agent is looking at the hot passionate scene of his own artist. The agent is wondering how a few days have not seen acting skills improved so much. Oh, see through it. Don't say it. As soon as the photo shoot is over, Pen begins to sanitize. It's really one thing in front of people and one thing behind them, and this dislike is almost overflowing out of the screen. However, no star can escape some socializing. Ben, who attends a private dinner with his father, tries to hide his inner discomfort and resistance. The more he thought about it, the angrier he got after and during the night. But seeing Nuon's messages and the likes he gets from his fans, it seems like all the unhappiness has been swept away. When he thinks about the endorsement he's about to get, it seems worth the effort. On this day, Ben, who has his heart set on his career, sees a well-known producer of BL drama coming to the set and rushes up to greet him, trying to get a job opportunity, and his smile so much that his face is almost cramped. Nuon is so jealous that he doesn't care if he cooperates or not. He shoots a little video of the music and then pulls him into a little corner for a little tutoring. Pan has just asked Nuon to tangle with him when he is hit with an online comment. He was so concerned about what his fans thought of him and was so sad about it that his bad feelings affected his performance. He questioned Nuon why he released the business video. Nuon tells Pen outright that what he's been doing for the past three years has been done willingly. Pen freezes. He just wants to focus on his career, but his CP wants to pursue him. So Pen decided to cut down on interaction to avoid critical voices. But against all odds, they still have CP fans, accusing them of having a problem with their business attitude. Under media scrutiny, Pen breaks down straight away. He doesn't understand why he has fans who are unhappy no matter what he does. What he doesn't realize is that as long as he's service-minded, he'll be manipulated by his fans. In the end, he will lose himself completely. Pen and Nuon's NC scenes are so plentiful in the new drama that even the director went out of his way to coach them himself. And I was in awe of the level of commitment of both actors. Nuon's love for Pen is so overwhelming that it keeps kissing, even after the director yells it's over. After the shoot, Pen reminisced about the time he used to spend with Nuon and felt it was nice to have someone around to share things with. Of course, it is not enough to communicate only in the mind. After the passion, Nuon hints to Pen that he wants to finalize their relationship, but Pen is repulsed, insisting that their relationship can only be a bad partner and off-screen CP. He wants to focus on his career, not his love, in order to solve Pen's family relationship. Nuon again takes the initiative to bring Pen back to his hometown to meet his future mother-in-law, but to his surprise, he is turned away. It turns out that Pen's family doesn't understand Pen's work, so Pen's mood is always low. Luckily, Nuon is always by his side. This is the moment when Pen finally unplugs, this time not doing it for the sake of acting and not fulfilling a need, all from the heart. But just then, bad news fell from the sky. The TV deal that Pen once sold out to get, the chance to become a legitimate actor that he was bound and determined to get, became someone else's overnight. Tears fall from Pen's eyes as he learns the truth. Under the arrangement of his agent, he dined with high officials of the TV station and didn't sleep in exchange for someone else is taking advantage of the signing. After venting his anger at Nuon, Pen goes straight to his manager to settle the score. 
but the agent makes a bunch of excuses. But Penn is never stupid again. He grabs his agent's cell phone and discovers that the other party has talked to a high-ranking official about the price of Penn's escort for the night. It turns out that you are just a tool in a deal. Nuan, who comes to comfort Penn at this point, is again rejected outright. After their big fight, Penn wanted to quit showbiz and go back home, but his indifferent mother made him realize that there was no way back for him. Penn comes to the set with a strong sense of humor and realizes that everyone around him has changed their attitude towards him since he became an independent artist. Are the first time I've ever seen a movie in my life, and I've never seen a movie in my life. The people who used to fawn over him are watching the show. He realizes that he has always been insignificant in the circle and anyone can replace him. Penn's video of him lashing out on set has been leaked and he has been ridiculed by netizens and CP fans have been greatly disappointed by what he has done. People with ulterior motives have also released photos of his meals. For a while, Penn's image hit rock bottom, unable to roll over. Penn chooses to end it all. Nuon is the only person in the circle who is genuinely good to him. After only one night, Penn is like a different person, disliking others for selling their bodies to get a chance and being complacent. The formerly lowly manager becomes unforgiving. And Nuon, who comes to the rescue, accidentally reveals his secret. Overnight, a big star has become an entertainer that everyone calls out which is both realistic and frightening. After Penn and Nuon have a huge fight, a producer calls him out. Sure enough, it's not enough to turn around on your own. You need to have the help of a valuable person with capital in hand. He offers to hook up with his former roommate so he can't gather evidence of wrongdoing by his former broker. Of course, he has to pay for it. Penn suddenly reveals herself on air with explicit prices for attending meals and sleeping with her. Anyway, it's already like this. The big deal is that it's a fish out of water. The manager has done so much favors for him, but he is returning the favor by promoting someone else to the top. It turns out that he took the initiative to enter the agent's room in order to become famous as soon as possible. The agent was horrified to see the video Penn released. It's exciting to have all these things on the table. Penn followed the producer's advice to stop playing the goody two shoes and return to the set on his own terms for the final shoot. By the time the finale rolls around, he realizes that the wishes and applause that started it all are now gone. The media's focus at the celebratory dinner was on the drama's subplots, with Penn and Nuon CP already in a state of disrepair. Nuon seems to have grown up overnight and seems to understand Penn's words that the circle is never about who you can have. The turnover of CPS in Biel's circles is fast or brutal. He feels sorry for Penn, but there's nothing he can't do about it. Penn is no longer the main character and no longer plays the role of the white boy. The experience of these days has allowed him to say goodbye to his vain self and usher in a new life as an actor. It could have ended here, but the writers had to come up with a happy ending. Ben, preoccupied with his career, gets on the motorcycle of Nuon, who is in love with him. I'm really speechless. As for the process of Pen forgiving Nuon, it's up to you to imagine it, with the sale of flesh, or to use extraordinary means to curry favor with the gold master, but also experience the double betrayal of the agent and the lover, and finally manage to get back on his feet. It can only be said that Pen still really strong awe. I thought Pen and Nuon's unit was big enough. But I didn't realize that Battle of the Brokers gave me a straight-up bondage play. Let's take a look at who the CP is this time. Suddenly hugely popular Vincent and Eric, who backfired on the previous unit, take up a lot of the drama. But that's not all. Their new drama has also shot to the top of the charts, and they're finally coming out on top after years of fighting. Vincent's agent, Jenny, and Eric's agent, Faye, are like sisters, but Jenny wants the pair to be tied together forever, repeatedly hinting to Faye to make them a true CP. Faye has been non-committal. Eric the Fool is worried about the new drama and Sea Bridge, which is getting more and more exciting as Eric can't control the scenes. Maybe five years of business is really too long. And while filming, Eric realizes he really likes Vincent. Jenny found out and immediately started pushing the envelope. Yes, you guessed it. Still using Penn's approach from the last unit experiential acting training, she tells Vincent to follow Eric and take him down in the process. Although Eric's acting skills amazed the director on the opening day after a night of practicing, Eric was confused at this point. He can't tell if the two are a real couple or an on-screen CP and is in such bad shape that he catches Faye's attention. Faye learns the situation and argues directly with Jenny. Jenny feigns innocence and claims to know nothing. It's a shame Jenny didn't become an actress. Eric goes to ask Vincent if he's having sex with him for his job, and Vincent replies with a sweet set of words that Eric is instantly fooled by. The two want to make a big admission of love, can Jenny said. Want to continue to hang out in the circle have to be business while claiming brotherhood. Even if the real couple to maintain their original persona, the two younger brothers were good enough to cooperate with the business. Eric, in love, hears Vincent talking on the phone and it seems that he is hiding something from him. But thinking of Vincent's sweet words to him, 
Air chooses to believe them and stays in business, and just how hard are agents on artists? The manager starts to persuade Eric, who is so busy that he is physically exhausted. She tells Eric to work hard and gives him a long vacation next month. During the preparation for the CP concert, there were also a lot of situations where the two of them added songs to their own artists privately and exhausted each other's artists. Jenny, who once said she'd never split up, can't sit still as she watches Faye start picking up Eric's solo resources. The showbiz cake is so big, you can let Faye have it all. Everything is worthless in the face of profit. So, she also started picking up singles for Vincent for human commerce and under the influence of his manager. Vincent also became impatient and often made mistakes during training. But once the war started, it only got worse. Faye releases a clip of Vincent dropping a bottle of wine, spreading a scandal about his addiction to alcohol, and Jenny takes the opportunity to redeem herself. By releasing a wave of tragic comments, Faye puts shrimp in the cake and purposely lets Vincent eat it, causing Vincent to lose his job due to allergies. This slapdown down is always a classic scene from a Thai drama. Jenny angrily rebukes Faye for framing Vincent, and the two become enemies, while Eric and Vincent CP is about to dissolve. Eric tries to redeem himself, only to be met with Jenny's scorn. In the midst of a few arguments, Eric realizes what's going on. At this moment, Eric is so weak and helpless. He thought that the happy relationship, it turned out to be the three people set up a scam. After being cheated on, Eric becomes numb, facing Faye's hypocritical defense. Eric says that they can never go back to the old days. Vincent still wants to redeem himself, but the emotional damage done is too great. Eric said, since you listen to the agent in everything, you should treat Jenny as a mother. I don't want such a man. Eric's indecent video has gone viral on the internet. Faye held a press conference overnight. Eric cried that he was stupid and naive, a tearful cry but was recognized by the reporter. At this moment, Vincent suddenly appears to relieve Eric. One second a hero saves the day, the next Eric hits Vincent hard. It turns out that Vincent made these videos for him, and now he's still here playing the nice guy. But Vincent denies it, and Jenny claims she didn't post the video before the video could be cleared up. Vincent was set up for drug use and was taken to jail. Eric is heartbroken for Vincent and begs Faye for help. Faye says coincidentally, I happen to have Vincent's alibi here. It's a coincidence. Jenny waits for Vincent to get out of jail and immediately issues a statement and opens a live stream to clarify. Jenny's clarification was righteous, but netizens didn't take it well. Many fans blamed Jenny for her inaction and unworthiness to be there for her brother. Jenny is devastated by this. But Faye tries to take advantage of the situation to get Vincent to jump ship and work under her. How can this be tolerated? The two fought directly. Jenny decides to let Vincent go it alone from now on and not look for a CP. At this point, Faye can't sit still and plans for Eric to form a CP business with someone else again. The two, who are being led around by their agents, talk to each other. Eric takes the opportunity to encourage Vincent to team up and set up a scheme to get rid of the two agents. They have so many CP fans. Are they still afraid of not being able to find an agent to sign them? At this point, netizens continue to attack Faye and Jenny for being incompetent and for not knowing how to pay off an idol's blackmail. Jenny has taken a lot of losses this round, but she still sees the ring through. Eric and Vincent announce a pause in duo activities under pressure from their manager and catch the young lady who spread the rumor. Miss Ben is a CP fan and a very favorite kind. But she overhears about Eric and Vincent's fake business and how she didn't expect her favorite couple to be fake. Is this the way to end up liking the on-screen CP as well? Since then, she has been posting on the internet, never venting her inner resentment, but she never expected to be caught by the producers. The young lady is scared. Jenny says, just wait for my lawyer's letter. How come the lady immediately changed her story and said that someone paid her to spread bad information about Eric? The finger is pointed violently at Faye. Faye keeps denying it. But Eric comes up with proof. In the face of the crowd's skepticism, Faye finally figures out who the real culprit is. She looks at Eric in shock and asks if he did it. But Eric, why did you get so worked up and sick? Eric announced his termination from Faye the next day. The internet is back to yelling at Faye, still posting from Jenny's account. Jenny knows that Vincent won't be able to stay either. But she didn't realize that Vincent was recording Jenny's conversation. And Jenny was furious and poked him. She said Vincent's attempt to get out of his contract with his agent by recording is simply not going to happen. But Vincent, with a mention from Eric, he also keeps a backup, secretly hiding a recording cell phone. The netizens are outraged when an edited recording of the night was revealed. Jenny is now forced to terminate her contract with Vincent as well. Eric and Vincent's plan was so successful that they got rid of their troublesome agent. It wasn't long before Vincent and Eric received an invitation from their new agent to attend a press conference. The new manager once again posts the news of CP's reunion online. 
and Vincent and Eric's comeback is just around the corner. And the number to hot topic is Faye and Jenny are back together again, trying to team up to launch a new pair of CPS. Faye and Jenny have tons of connections and resources and are not that easy to suppress. After taking a beating from Eric and Vincent, they're now going to make those two boys pay back twice as much. The girls invite major media outlets to a press conference to break the truth about Eric and Vincent's termination. The new agent confronts Vincent and Eric about what bad things they're hiding that they haven't said so he can't figure out how to publicize them. The two men kept their mouths shut. The new agent has no choice but to sit Faye and Jenny down for a negotiation. Four people are arguing. The two men confess to what they had done and threaten them with death, but Jenny and Faye won't believe it. At this point, Eric was so anxious that he almost got sick again. Faye finally still heard the child, said I do not expose the okay, seeking death really not to. The new manager said that the situation still has to be out of my hands, and he got the two to go public with the news that they are in a relationship. The young couple lying in bed after publicizing their relationship. Benson asked Eric if he was happy. Eric said no more hiding. He must be happy, but after less than a night of fun, a phone call from the producer breaks the silence, and he asks Eric to transfer money to him. Hey, what's going on here? Eric was the one who set up Vincent's drug use, is a real masterpiece of a ploy, so the person who posted the video in the first place, was it also himself? It's so scary, because real couples are extraordinarily popular in the marketplace because of their rarity. Vincent and Eric are living in their dream mansion and launching a world tour with a gold medal manager. To keep the pair's former agent from leaking, the new agent wrote a $2 million check as hush money. Eric is excited to kick off the latest BL Drama Awards as the most anticipated candidate for the award. It's his ultimate goal to get into the biz, and he doesn't seem any less ambitious than Penn. While everything is going the way Eric expects, Jenny and Faye turn down the hush money and come backstage with contrite intentions. Eric sees so many people having another attack, which means Vincent doesn't see it. It's Eric's acting. Faye straight up dismantles Eric's plot and the faking of his illness. After hearing Eric's admission, Vincent is completely disappointed. Jenny let out a sneer. At this point, Eric admits that he directed his own play. In order to get back at them for their decision to cheat on him, he has to disguise himself as a victim and get sympathy from everyone, so that his popularity will come up and the prize will be within his reach. The fact that you're posting your own indecent video is a giveaway. Co-producers set up Vincent to go to jail surprisingly simply to get the network to decide that the agent is not doing his job well. After getting everyone in a tizzy, Eric is still smug and calm, even though he knows he's being recorded, because he can't absolutely say that the recording was fake or forced. We're senior agents, how could we not know what to do? She straight to video. Eric quickly knelt down and begged Faye to let him off the hook. Faye gave Eric two choices straight away. If he continued to go on stage to receive the award, then the video would be exposed. If he did not want to be exposed, he would have to announce his retirement immediately. Eric was once so close to his dream, but the jackpot ended up in someone else's hands. The newest addition to the list is the newest addition to the list. Then, Eric really announced his retirement and took a photo with his previous fangirl to say goodbye. Benson also comes to see him off, telling Eric to do things without hurting others. Eric shed tears of remorse. Benson, ah, you know too much. After all, in the first place, you also got Eric drunk and had sex with him for the sake of your career. Now, you're here to play nice. I must say, you two are a perfect match. It seems like the writers are really trying to force everyone to be good. So the question is, is this circle really just a retreat? Does it make sense that a top stream would instantly retreat back to its home? But combining that with the fact that nowadays, there are also big stars who go to jail out of the blue. It seems like you can't understand the ending. Next time we'll be starting a new unit, a story about a couple of idols interacting with each other in a crazy sweep way. I'm so envious of it. After watching so many years of male and female group casting, this is the first time I have seen BL Circle casting. Six fresh meat living in a big villa, 24 hours by the camera to follow. Mentor-led group competition? Does this look like the Bee Gees? The process of announcing the rankings after each performance is the same as that of a talent show. The most exaggerated is that there is everyone at the same time on the live broadcast. This is not the previous talent show set. Awesome. After watching the opening show, I couldn't help but open the app to vote for the teens, but a slap on the head reveals that whoops, it's surprisingly just a play. Let's get to know the six boys who stood out from the rest of the contestants. Jason, Kevin, everyone is very familiar with. We do not do not introduce, and designers and his CP. Next, I'd like to introduce the main characters, Alex and Leo. They are newcomers tapped by Jenny and Faye to venture into the BL scene with their senior and junior personas. Since you're new to the BL scene, 
It's essential to group up for business. There's a thing in Alex's mind that he can't get past. Every time he sees a family homage, he automatically brings himself and Leo into it, and even imagines the images. He refused to open too much business, but he was afraid he wouldn't be able to hold it. After his first appearance on stage, Alex was ranked the lowest, and he had to rely on his senior Leo to comfort him. The first time I saw this, I had to go to a place where I could see all the people in the world. And I had to go to a place where I could see all the people in the world. And I had to go to a place where I could see all the people in the world. He also deeply felt how dedicated the other contestants were, all interacting wildly with their official CPS and attracting fans to watch. Alex is so sad about this that Leo can watch and helps him turn off the live stream. Leo accuses him of not being able to cooperate for the sake of his work business. How can he stay in this circle? The next day, Alex seems to be feeling it a bit and sweetly feeds for attention, teachers group competition, in order to perform well and get out of last place. Alex dances a fierce girl group dance with the help of Leo. This dance is very embarrassing to look at. This they can also call it a dance. I am speechless. Jason pushes Alex to keep practicing in order to win and keeps complimenting him on the side. Eventually, Alex gets so fatigued that he passes out and breaks his foot. Not bad. Alex's soft persona is a perfect feat. Everyone recalls the various injuries in the talent show. But the physically challenged contestants continue to perform on their own right. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that after that Alex might get some sympathy from the fans for this mishap and be the winner of the second week. As expected, Alex has been carefully taken care of by the program team since he was injured. Not to mention that he has brought up hot searches, causing a lot of netizens a lot of heartache. Alex's popularity is rising fast. But Leo, who knows him well, catches on to Alex's tricks. Leo not only didn't blame him for cheating, he said he did a great job and finally had the good sense to win. The program team has Jason and CP in a brotherly love scene for the sake of topic heat. It seems you can't enter a talent show without bringing some acting skills with you. I think we all understand why Alex is pretending to be injured. He can't compete with the performances, so he has to be surprised. The scene a fall, sitting in a wheelchair, attracted the fans commented on the heartbroken call of the poor, but also won the program group to give a special award. Although the winner this time is Leo. The conversation goes back to Alex. Jason, the winner of the last edition, is very depressed inside. Jason sees that Alex is faking his injuries and even looks for a chance to poke him. Watching Alex go for a physical after the game, he can't help but think this is always going to show. But what he didn't realize was that Alex had bruised his leg trying to tell a lie. Sure enough, when people are ruthless, they don't even spare themselves. Leo's heart suddenly ached as he watched Alex get really hurt this time. Back in the moment, Leo realizes that he seems to be really caught up in it, and he can hardly believe he's getting so involved. Alex, pushed away, sees the shock and uncertainty in Leo's eyes and loses it internally. The high energy coming from the front, the two actually went straight to a bed. I was just about to exclaim that you two can't still play so intensely when there's someone lying next door. I didn't realize it was just a dream Leo had. The next day when doing the game, Leo obviously feels that Alex is avoiding him. Is Alex going to find other people to form a CP? Why would Alex do that? The story begins with his childhood, when he knew he was gay and was bullied by his classmates at school, and not understood by his father at home. In the course of spending time with Leo, Alex silently falls in love with Leo. But since meeting Leo at the pool, and judging by Leo's reaction, Alex realizes that Leo is not the same kind of person as him. If you can't get love, then focus on your career. Alex uses his prerogative to break up Jason and Kevin's official pairing when it comes to choosing a singing partner. One is trying to get a buzz going, and the other is that Kevin does sing well enough to help him win the title. Leo was angry and went to Alex, saying that at least we are the same manager who brought out the CP. How can we break it up just like that? Alex capriciously stated, I can't do whatever I want, you can't care. Leo also forms a CP with the others, in order to get back at the underling and acts close. This is Alex's turn to be jealous. But isn't this all your own fault? The competition scene. Alex picks a fight between Jason and the designer in order to win. The man is not a good singer, but you have a lot of heart to wrestle for the camera. Alex initiates a kiss on Kevin without warning. Kevin is scared stiff and ready to go home on his knees. Alex did it to start a conversation, but Alex's plan went awry and the title was taken by Kevin. The other guys at least act like they're happy for their fellow man. But Alex, you're just too embarrassed with that look of displeasure. But the imports of gain and loss does not mean that the true nature of the O, oh, it will only appear to be petty. After the game, a few people gathered around Alex for a big fight. The designer blames him for his pre-game picks that affected his play. Kevin calls him out for sexual harassment, and Jason outright pokes him for faking an injury earlier to gain sympathy. 
Kevin is now a target, but to add insult to injury, the program arranged a meeting with the parents. Kevin was severely scolded by his father and was really embarrassed in public. Kevin, who is crying very hard, is found by Leo, the only one who cares about him. Although Kevin is touched, he warns Leo against his will to stay away from him when he thinks about the pool. Leo is furious and tells Alex that if he continues to be so bent out of shape, it will only make him more and more withdrawn. What Leo said is really so right. If you keep resisting people's kindness like this, you will only end up being disliked by everyone. At this point Alex, too, can't help but reminisce about what once was. It turns out that when he was a student, Leo, as a senior, took special care of Alex. The two are very popular at school for their fan fiction, but this makes Alex feel very embarrassed. Since then, Leo has relieved him many times. In fact, Alex is the kind of person who is sensitive at heart but pretends to be strong, has a very twisted personality, doesn't know how to read people's minds, and is easily offended. Only Leo understands him and is willing to enlighten him. After a new round of main CP acting finished, the six were grouped again. Alex and the designer, who already hated each other, both grimaced at their arrangement. At the end of the play, Leo has to gently kiss someone else, and Alex is uncomfortable and a little jealous. The show's main theme is to change partners. Leo wants to act with Alex, but he can't do it. But Alex is still bitter and ungrateful to Leo, insisting that he can't do it on his own. He was already upset, and Jason was deliberately trying to provoke him. The two fight right away, but Alex has a lead role and the show doesn't punish him much. In order to get Alex to open up, Leo makes a touching persuasion that reminds Alex of his student days, and the two get back together. It's probably always with love that you can't be good friends, and their relationship seems to have taken a step forward as the two unwind their moods. Leo, realizing this, sings a love song to confess his love. This time, Alex finally responds to Leo. The two were about to kiss, but they were interrupted by shouts from downstairs. Finally, it's time for a full-on kiss. Now Alex and Leo are playing intimate scenes in a way that is both natural and easy. The natural reaction between the two made the program team look the other way. The program sneaks up on Alex and tells him that he is the wife's group's internal champion. This time, Jason next door couldn't sit still. The show's main attraction is Alex, who has taken the liberty of making the kissing scene so intense that even Kevin is stunned by the kiss. The performance was unsatisfactory, but he did not have the opportunity to reshoot. Jason yells at Alex for winning by dishonorable means and ends up getting pulled into a conversation by the producers. Jason cries and expresses his inner dissatisfaction that he is not being seen when he is so good. Only Kevin can comfort him at this time. On the other hand, Leo became the winner of the husband group in the minds of the show's producers with his and his excellent performance in the drama show. But TV executives think otherwise and feel that Kevin's image is better suited to the mayor's needs. The producers had no choice but to nod their heads. And after that, they even started to create a topic so that Kevin and Alex's CP topic dominated the top of the charts. While filming the footage, the crew directed Alex to mention Kevin more and interact with him more intimately. Now, many of you should be able to see who the champion CP is this time around. Kevin cooperates with the show's crew and interacts intimately with Alex, but Jason can't see past it and just pulls Kevin away. Kevin is really in a difficult situation. On one side is the CP arranged by the program team. On the other side is the love of his life. He simply does not know how to choose. Jason is not in the right frame of mind and walks right into punching Alex during rehearsal and accuses him of stealing his CP. After venting, both the batterer and the battered cried, and I couldn't tell whose fault it was for a while. Alex says, it's hard for me too. It's not like I want to be the winner. It's the producers who want to internalize me, and I'm under a lot of pressure. Jason, at the end of the day, has to struggle to his death, asking Kevin to bring his name when he says his testimonial. But Kevin just turned him down, and it's time for Alex to change for the better, as he says on stage that he doesn't deserve to be an idol, that he's insincere and weak. Obviously, he's going to give up the inside championship, so who's the champion going to be? That's right, it's Jason. The winner must be obedient and understanding. Even though Alex is very popular and discussed, the show team still let Jason win the competition through backroom deals. Jason and Kevin got what they wanted and Alex and Leo were lucky enough to be signed to other companies. Alex's decision to reform is recognized by his family and a new love affair. Waiting from the beginning of the show for Jason and Kevin's unit. This unit sort of follows the storyline of the previous unit. The opening scene is a big one. This is the trailer for Jason Kevin's first BL drama after his casting win. This drama also added the designer and his CP, which is kind of the sub-CP of this drama. The director of this drama is a big deal, being Peter's first work in transition from actor to director. 
It's clear from the first few episodes that Peter is a man of means. At the press conference of the new drama, Peter took care of the staff in every detail and made every detail perfect. After a performance, the cast takes the stage. Jason and Kevin almost kiss for a news headline. The scene's images put the drama on the top of the Hot 100 list. Peter gave a satisfied smile. To be on the safe side, Peter has a few of the actors sign a contract that says they can fall in love for two years. Kevin joked that what to do? Why don't we just have a relationship with our own CP? It's not a breach of contract to fake it, right? But Peter said, pretending to be CP is essentially acting. Sober up, don't take the fake as real. And that statement means that Kevin is definitely going to fake it with Jason. If you don't believe me, let's look down. After filming begins, the beautiful actress Beata appears, and her straightforward personality attracts the attention of the boys. Beata says he's been a fan of Jason and Kevin's CP for a while now, so he's been eating and chatting with them a lot. She also offers to help them to record their sweet interactions, and while she looks pretty reliable, I always thought she'd be a big pain in the ass in the future. As it turns out, Beata is actually Peter's undercover agent. Peter asked her to spy on the actors, and not to break the rules and sneak into a relationship. When it comes to this cast, there is a real underground couple, and that's the designer them. The two of them are secretly kissing when Jason and Kevin happen to see them. Luckily, the two reacted quickly and pulled Beata away to keep this under wraps. Jason and Kevin's first time as lead roles, their acting skills are still quite green, especially Jason, who relies too much on his skills to commit to the love scenes. So Beata gives them the idea to kiss and practice more. So it'll come naturally. Kevin starts off with Jason getting him to open up to himself. In fact, at this time, Kevin already liked Jason and even have some unspoken fantasies. Hey, this is a public place. Your fantasies are too exciting. Over the course of filming, Kevin's love for Jason grows deeper and deeper, always half-jokingly wanting to fall in love with him for real. But Jason, like Penn, only has his career. And Beata, on his mind, I don't know when Jason fell in love with Beata, but wasn't he jealous of Kevin before? When they learn that Beata is sick, they go to Beata's house to see her. Kevin wonders how Jason knows where Beata lies. Jason was a little embarrassed by this, but ultimately brushed it off. Kevin, are you blinded by love? Jason's so concerned about Beata. You don't see anything wrong? Kevin is waiting for Jason in the car to go home after filming. As it turns out, Jason is actually with Beata. Was surprised, but refused to move. The next day on the set, Jason teases Beata again. What are you two doing? I can't help but get mad at you. There are so many people around. Can't you pay attention? Beata can't hold back the passionate and handsome Jason. Ah. Uh, I obviously want to watch a simple BL drama, but you have to play this scene for me. You say it's infuriating, don't you? Peter as a drama producer, in order to promote the drama, in addition to the brain constantly adding large-scale NC scene, but also constantly off the script to create a topic, the TV station arranged for a well-known director to enter the group, and as soon as he appeared on stage, he was so aggressive that he directly put Peter on the spot. A director who comes from a career in BL dramas, looks down on a BL drama actor who turns to production and then has to be forced to go back to his old job. Now we all know where so many of the world's outrageous BL dramas come from, right? And the serious actors encountered such a crew are a waste of time, but Kevin is still very dedicated, and he and Jason contribute to the conversation. The thought of Kevin, who is overly committed, being rejected makes my heart ache for him. Since last time, Beata has been in a relationship with Jason, but after all, staying on the same BL drama set, must have been especially hard for Bianna as she watched her boyfriend make out with other men. I started out as a CP fan, but now one of the two has become my boyfriend and the other my love rival. She really doesn't know what to do. At this moment, Bianna is literally suffocating. She knows in her heart that her boyfriend is just acting, but she is still worried that what happened in the episode is happening in reality. The girlfriend worries every day, but Jason doesn't care because he's a bad man. Even with a girlfriend, he should at least avoid suspicion when he's with Kevin in private. Right? However, not only does he not keep his distance, he actively hooks up with Kevin. Kevin, the silly boy, is so caught up in his trap. Kevin says he's nervous before filming starts. Jason encourages him with a kiss. After a long day at work, the two chatted backstage and Jason naturally Saturday on Kevin's lap and let him lean on his chest to recharge his batteries. Kevin is comforted, but Beata isn't yet. Beata, after wrapping up her shift, she hid in her car waiting for Jason for fear of being seen by others. Jason gets into the passenger seat so skillfully. Probably because that's how sisters-in-law operate in BL dramas. Beata is really humble. On this day, Jason takes Beata for coffee and happens to see Kevin. I was expecting Jason to be embarrassed and find a reason to leave, but I didn't expect it to go this way. 
Not only does he not admit to his relationship with Bianna, he actively flirts with Kevin, your girlfriend's watching from behind, and you're going too far with this. Bianna calls out to Kevin to tell him the truth, but is interrupted by Jason. Bianna, are you stupid? The fact that your boyfriend doesn't tell anyone who you are means he doesn't love you that much at all. Kevin wisely relieved Jason in the live broadcast, and their natural interaction attracted a lot of people, and went straight to the top of the Hot 100 list. Jason and Kevin chat in a way backstage like no one's business, or Peter creates an opportunity for them to sidetrack everyone. Good man, to people like to I, even directly kissed. This is not a play or a rehearsal. Kevin is looking for a showdown, when he feels Jason is getting more and more ambivalent about him. The two kiss intimately in the light, but, Jason, aren't you forgetting something? Your girlfriend called you down scenes of times and you didn't answer, and you did it behind her back and had sex with someone else. This chaotic relationship really makes my three senses almost shatter. Early in the morning, Jason receives a text message from Kevin and smiles in love, oblivious to the fact that Bianca next to him is already very upset. In the morning, the three have breakfast as usual, and Jason Kevin's intimate gestures are simply sweeter than anything on a TV show. But Bianca is no longer a CP fan now. The only thing she saw was naked jealousy, and she left angrily without having eaten to bites. Simple Kevin doesn't know what's going on yet. Jason has already rushed to coax Bianca, lying to her that she was too tired last night and didn't reply to the message. Listening to Jason's sweet words, Bianca soon stops being angry. Today we are going to shoot the locker scene. The old Bianca used to scream with excitement when she saw the main character's passionate scene. But how can she get excited now? Listening to the makeup artists, Jason, Kevin's rivalry scenes are getting more and more real. The script is written 20%, there are still 80%, all depends on the free play. Her heart hands in the air again. The trio are filming the start of a live TV broadcast, with Beata in the middle so embarrassed she can't stop laughing. The two men are flirting with each other, and they're like a light bulb. Kevin's cat is a little bit of a stranger, but he's a little bit more of a fan of Jason's cat, and he's a little bit more of a fan of his cat. Jason coaxes Beata with some more sweet words and passes out. You really don't suspect a thing, do you? On the other hand, Jason hugged Kevin and cried that he had been bullied. Kevin feels Jason is weak, pitiful and helpless and takes his hand and says that he wants to protect him and move forward with him. This evening, time management guru Jason leaves time for Beata. Beata was just about to argue about his lies when Jason wisecracked that he and Kevin talk about scripts for work. And you're my girlfriend, don't you want to see me succeed? Bianca is persuaded by a flurry of words and instantly forgives Jason. She was just about to have something happen, but Jason just said he was too tired for another day. It looks like I had a little too much fun with Kevin last night, and I don't have the energy today. The main show is over, but Jason seems to be a little bit too much, and came to the shower room still want to be a little more exciting later. But then, Bianca suddenly walks up and the three confront each other on the spot, asking Jason who he's choosing. Jason said, don't push me, I won't choose any of them. I'll choose the job. What an excellent answer. In the end, the selfish Jason only loves himself. With Beata is for fun. With Kevin is to practice his acting skills. Two people's true hearts are mercilessly discarded by him. Kevin also ignores Jason on set. And Beata's affair with Jason is blown out of proportion. She took a leave of absence from the crew and was in her room recalling the moments with Jason. Looking at the two lines shown on the pregnancy test and falling into a deep thought. Peter was furious when he found out about this. It's a big no-no for a BL actor. To have an affair with an actress, he had the assistant director write Beata's character to death, accusing Beata of taking his money and having a relationship with an actor under him. On the other hand, since Beata and Jason's scandal was exposed, the cast and crew are on edge, fearing that Peter won't be able to solve the crisis, which will lead to the interruption of the TV series filming. But who is Peter? It's the man with the most means on the show, and he gives Jason a run for his money right away. He tells Jason to break up with Beata immediately and show up to the conference as Kevin's boyfriend. Peter warns Jason that it's best to do what he says, and that he should know what the outcome will be if there's an accident. Kevin looks at Jason with a guilty look on his face and asks him if he feels stupid for being with Bianca while having sex with him and hiding it from him for so long. Jason says he grew up without friends, and when he saw that Kevin and Bianca both liked him, he wanted to hold on to them physically. Kevin almost forgives Jason, but Jason starts to pass the buck again. As expected, Jason's mind is only on himself from the beginning, and he doesn't want Bianca to affect his career, let alone be responsible for the baby in his womb. Soon, it will be the day of the press conference. The bad guy's apology speech is more or less the same. I'm sorry. I was wrong. She is my ex. The child is not mine. Jason relies on his family's connections to get even more damning evidence that Bianca is transgender and could never have gotten pregnant. 
The fact that Bianna bought the pregnancy test is obvious to everyone. It's our supporting actress Bianna, who wants to get back at Jason and make him admit his feelings. Peter looked at Jason and thought, You're not a simple kid. Originally the hot topic was Bianna and Jason's unflattering video, but now it's been replaced with a big reveal of Bianna's identity. The two met again and looked to be on the verge of a complete fallout, but the writers ended up arranging a reconciliation. I'm really impressed that you can't make peace with this. Undeterred by the scandal, the cast and crew continued filming, and a group of netizens launched a boycott, accusing the cast and crew of dismissing Bianna as if nothing had happened, and not addressing the issue head on. But the negative news, on behalf of the heat, is also high. The drama aired on the air broke 500 million broadcast, really a big drama of the year. The TV station is happy to be renewed for a second season, and Peter rushes to hand Jason and Kevin a contract. Afterwards, the two can finally have a good chat, although Kevin is still very fond of Jason. He decides to stop indulging in his relationship and focus on his career. Kevin said, I loved you, and I forgive you, but I'm never going to be in a CP again after that. The two decided not to renew their contracts. See these two actually dare to disobey. Peter is starting to play something else. What is it? Let's all take a guess. That's right. It's a prize buy. Do you remember the first episode? At last year's annual BL Drama Awards ceremony, Artie took home the grand prize, and this time he's ready to go dark as well. In the end, Kevin won the Best Actor Award. Peter didn't even bother to put on a fake smile when he looked at the actor who broke his contract. Under the disdainful gaze of fellow newcomers, Peter cheerfully delivers his acceptance speech, telling new actors to learn to love themselves first, and that one day he will be loved by the audience. What a grandiose speech, but what is even more breathless is yet to come. Peter set up his persona by saying he would never encounter any award competition again and leave the opportunity to newcomers. And then he released a trailer of his second pairing with someone else. Peter is so good, a good awards show is made into a new drama launch for him. Then tonight's hot search is again contracted by Peter. Peter this operation is also too powerful. At this point the lowly newcomers are thinking, so the seniors really don't leave a chance for themselves. The final scene, which I kind of liked, had all the actors and actresses who appeared in the show standing in the spotlight and raising their trophies. Every actor in a BL drama should have a dream in his heart to be recognized by the public in the limelight, even if you have experienced deception, betrayal, disguise, jealousy, and entrapment in the circle, and difficulties on the road to success. But as long as the role of the heart interpretation, I will make you become shining, well, this drama is going to really say goodbye to everyone here. Feel free to leave a comment in the comments section and discuss which story is your favorite. We'll see you on the next program.